Good morning, folks. We've got space weather on our doorstep, amazing animations, and new ionosphere info from NASA, and this month of December appears now to have confirmed that both Cascadia and San Andreas are snitches, giving away their bigger quakes hours to days early. But let's begin over at spaceweathernews.com. Last 24 hours on our star, not much happening center disk as the coronal hole swings through. So much for that sunspot of his, by the way. It's gone now, and we've got no solar flares. But if you noticed activity at the limbs, Good eye. Plasma filaments and umbral magnetic fields stood tall over both sides from Earth's perspective. Did have a couple ejections as well. Solar wind. Generally trending downward on the long run here, and Earth's magnetic shield is neither disrupted nor putting in a fully solid effort as plasma has begun penetrating this morning with what should be the hours before a phi angle shift in the solar wind. I do indeed expect the faster streams from that lead coronal hole turning away to arrive today although the harsher streams might come from the bulk swinging past Earth now and setting the earthquake warning noted in the title of yesterday's news. But where were we expecting the quakes? Well, this was our alert map posted just after yesterday's news. I usually update them right after posting the program, which is why showing them in the morning news isn't really helpful for you. They'll change by the time you watch it. But folks, this was only the second time California got a red alert. Since we began doing this in November of 2015, 13 months ago, U.S. got some orange alerts, a yellow alert, but the first red alert came early on December 8th, and you all know a magnitude 6.5 struck the Mendocino Junction later that day. Well, yesterday they got their second red alert, and luckily we didn't have anything as big as a week ago, but folks, these are both above average, easily the most notable quakes of the day, and they are the only two officially listed significant events, red type instead of black, in the entire world yesterday. We'll update the map after the news today, like I said, but I'll assure you the USA will be on alert at least one more day. But yeah, looks like San Andreas does give itself away, just like Cascadia did a week ago, and folks, can't really say we're out of the woods just yet today. Got the bulk mass beginning to interact with Earth in terms of the IMF of that coronal hole, and there's coupling potential. That CME could hit 1 AU any minute now, actually, and begin the circuit process. Moving on, we're at the Goddard Scientific Visualization Studio where there's a ton of new information, animations, and insight into how we got, are getting, and will get this information into the future. Mostly, this is an effort to determine the initial ionospheric effects through the full evolution of those resulting from space weather impacts. The expansion, the excitement, the surging of solar plasma into the Earth system, really well done, and I only selected a few of the many resources you'll find at today's featured link there. Weather is wintry across the northern states. Time lapse of snow off Lake Erie coming at Buffalo there. PNC Park in my old hometown, Steel City in the background. But things out west aren't much better, in fact even more snow records are in jeopardy here at the end of the week. Was probably the best day of earthquake forecasting that didn't have a single magnitude 6 event. Funny how that works. You can learn more at quakewatch.net. Right now we've got your pressure and radar forecast followed by shots of our star to close. It's 4.20 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe everyone.